a city in eastern Ukraine, where temperatures can drop as low as minus 30 in the winter, with a focus on heavy industries like coal and steel, Donetsk couldn't be much further removed from the Copacabana beaches of Rio or the sweltering heat of the Amazon rainforest. Yet a club from Donetsk, the fifth largest city in Ukraine, has become a hotspot for promising young Brazilian footballers over the last 15 years. Brazilian internationals such as Fernandinho, Fred, Douglas Costa, Willian, Bernard and Alano are just some of the famous faces who made their name in the European game with Shakhtar. So I thought it would be worthwhile to make a video taking a look at why a team from almost the easternmost point of Ukraine has become such fertile ground for future Samba stars. The city of Donetsk was founded in 1869 by a Welsh businessman named John Hughes, who built a steel plant and set up several coal mines in the Donbass region, naming the city Hughesovka. During the early Soviet era, the city was renamed Stalin and later Stalino, before being renamed Donetsk under Nikita Khrushchev's reign after the Seversky Donetsk River. Crime became a serious problem in the region following the fall of the Soviet Union and Ukraine gaining independence in 1991. Meanwhile, Donetsk's coal mines have been the site of numerous disasters taking hundreds of lives, and things have turned really ugly in the region since the 2014 Ukrainian Revolution. Shakhtar Donetsk were founded in 1936, and they spent most of their Soviet years in the top flight, winning four Soviet Cups, but never a top flight league title, unlike fellow Ukrainians Dynamo Kiev, who won the Soviet top league a record 13 times. Following independence, Dynamo continued to dominate Ukraine's football scene, winning nine consecutive league titles between 1992 and 2001. Shakhtar's team president Akat Bragin died mysteriously in 1995, and local oligarch Renat Akhmatov inherited the club. The then 29-year-old, who is now worth an estimated $6 billion, was an ambitious young president who wanted to see Shakhtar overtake Dynamo and win a European title. He successfully established Shakhtar as a force in Ukraine, routinely finishing second in the Ukrainian Premier League, but by 2004, the team had won just one league title during Akhmatov's nine years in charge and eight as president. It was in the summer of 2004 that Shakhtar really began to turn heads with the ambitious appointment of Mircea Luchescu, the former Brescia and Inter Milan boss who was adored at Besiktas having guided them to a Super League title in 2003. Luchescu arrived with the promise of funds and plenty of managerial freedom but with a mandate of sticking to Akhmatov's target, overtake Dynamo and win a European trophy. Luchescu had already been in management for 25 years when he turned up at Shakhtar and he had some pretty firmly established footballing philosophies. As a player, Luchescu won 70 caps for Romania, captaining the nation at the 1970 World Cup, and winning seven Romanian league titles with Dinamo Bucharest. Luchescu watched on in awe as Pele's Brazil waltz past all in their wake en route to lifting the Jules Rimet trophy, and he further fell in love with the Brazilian game a year later when Dinamo went on a tour of the country. Following the team's tour game against Fluminense, the Brazilian showed an interest in signing Luchescu, but the Romanian Communist Party wouldn't permit such a move. Luchescu may not have been able to play in Brazil, but he continued to admire Brazilian football from afar and became a self-confessed Fluminense fan. When he arrived in Ukraine in 2004, the independent Ukrainian national team had never qualified for the World Cup or the European Championships, despite having one of the top marksmen in the world in the form of Andrei Shevchenko. The general consensus was that, for the most part, Ukraine produced strong, well-disciplined footballers who made for solid defenders, but lacked real skill and technical prowess in attacking areas. Shakhtar had signed their first Brazilian, Brandao, in 2002 from Brazil's third tier, and the centre forward was Luchescu's star man in his first season in charge. Brandao scored 91 goals in 220 games over the course of seven seasons in Donbass, but his arrival in 2002 was a one off and not part of any grand master plan. Luchescu had met with a French Brazilian agent and scout by the name of Frank Hanuda during his time at Galatasaray, who had begun bringing Brazilians to Europe by helping Galatasaray beat PSG to the signing of Brazilian goalkeeper Claudio Tafarel. The combination of Shakhtar's attacking limitations, Luchescu's love of the Brazilian game, and Hanuda's Brazilian contacts would be a recipe for a Brazilian revolution in eastern Ukraine. Gifted attacking midfielder Jadson was brought in from Atletico Paraniense, as former Brazilian youth international Matuzalem and full Brazilian international Lano joined him in Luchescu's midfield ranks. Atletico Paraniense left-back Ivan also arrived on loan, meaning Luchescu and Hanuda had brought four Brazilians to the club in their first season in charge, meaning there were five Brazilians at the club in total. Shakhtar Samba stars made an immediate impact as the club won only their second Ukrainian Premier League title in Luchescu's debut campaign. Two more Brazilians arrived in the summer of 2005, namely holding midfielder Fernandinho and centre-back Leonardo. 
The aim was to sign promising young Brazilian players early in their development who could be signed relatively inexpensively, help Shakhtar to achieve success on the pitch, and then be sold for a profit should they outgrow the club. At first, it was difficult to tempt Brazilians to go to Ukraine, with the majority viewing it as a step down from the Campeonato Brasileiro, and one that could potentially cost them future opportunities. Agent Frank Anuda was tasked with selling the young players on the Shakhtar project, but his job would become easier and easier as Shakhtar's targets could see the success of other Brazilians who had made the move. Luchescu is multilingual, fluent in five languages, and Portuguese is one of them. He could converse with the young players and help them settle in, meanwhile Shakhtar hired other Portuguese speakers to help their new recruits settle into life in Ukraine. Luchescu made it back-to-back -back league titles for the first time in Shakhtar history in 2006, and Brazil under-20 star Luiz Adriano was the team's marquee signing in a 3 million euro move from Internacional the following summer. He was joined by right-winger Elsinio and the talented and versatile young forward Willian in the summer of 2007, as Shakhtar fought back from having missed out on the title for the first time in Luchescu's reign in the 2006-07 season. They reclaimed the title in the 2007-08 campaign to make it three league titles in four years under Luchescu's watch, and half his job was done. Akhmatov's dream of a European triumph was proving harder to realise, with Shakhtar having been dumped out of the UEFA Cup by AZ Alkmaar, Lille, and eventual winner Sevilla in each of Luchescu's first three seasons in charge, failing to even reach the quarterfinals. In the 2008-09 season, all focus would be on European achievement. Shakhtar entered the UEFA Cup at the round of 16 stage, having finished third in their Champions League group, and they were handed a tough tie against Tottenham Hotspur. Shakhtar won 3-1 on aggregate before beating CSK in Moscow to make the quarterfinals for the first time. Marseille were thrashed in the next round as supporters in Donbass began to dream, and that set up an all-Ukrainian semi-final between Shakhtar and Dynamo. The first leg ended in a one-all draw, and the second leg was tied at one-all in the 89th minute. In the dying embers of the game, up stepped Brazilian wide man Elsinio, who jinked past two Dynamo defenders before slotting the ball into the corner of the net and sending Shakhtar into the final. The final saw Luchescu return to Istanbul, where Shakhtar faced a Werder Bremen side who had finished as runners-up in the Bundesliga the previous season. Werder's star man was also Brazilian, namely Diego, but he was ruled out the final following a yellow card in the semi-final in their win over Hamburg. Following a Luis Adriano opener for Shakhtar, it was yet another Brazilian in the form of Naldo who equalised for Verda from a free kick, taking the game to extra time. In the 97th minute, it was the first Brazilian brought to the net by Machi Luchescu and Frank Anuda, Jadson, who scored the goal to make Renat Akhmatov's dream come true. The Shakhtar starting line for the final was almost exactly as Luchescu had envisioned it four years earlier. The team had an all-European back five, including the goalkeeper, with just three Ukrainians, a Poland holding midfield, and an all-Brazilian front five. Of the 14 goals that the team scored in the 2008-09 UEFA Cup, 13 were scored by Brazilians. The influx continued in the summer of 2009 as promising forwards Douglas Costa and Alex Teixeira were brought in, with plenty more to follow in the coming years. Luchescu left Shakhtar in 2016 following a 12-year stint of almost unfathomable success. He had succeeded in leapfrogging Dynamo, he had succeeded in winning a European trophy, and he had succeeded in creating a haven for the development of young Brazilian footballers in Eastern Europe. In total, he won 22 trophies in 12 seasons with the club, including eight league titles. Luchescu became an honorary citizen of Donetsk in 2014 and was given a third, second, and eventually a first-class order of merit from the Ukrainian government for his contribution to sporting the nation in 2011. Luchescu has since managed then at St. Petersburg, where he signed Brazilian attack midfielder Giuliano, and the Turkish national team, where he is unfortunately not allowed to sign any Brazilian players. Despite having been kicked out of their home ground due to the war in Donbass, and now operating without a home ground and without their fans, Shakhtar have continued in a similar vein since Luchescu's departure. Akhmatov replaced Luchescu with another Portuguese speaker, Paulo Fonseca, whose first signing was a South American, and Fonseca was himself replaced last summer by another Portuguese coach. Seven Brazilians have been signed since Luchescu left the club, in addition to one Argentinian, and Shakhtar's star men are still Brazilians, despite the fact some of their best Brazilians like Marlos, Tyson, and Junior Marias actually now represent Ukraine on the international stage as well. Look around in any of Europe's top leagues and in the Brazilian national team, and you're likely to find someone who has been nurtured and has flourished in the unlikely setting of Donetsk, or, in more recent times, in Kharkiv. Fernandinho is still a key man for the Premier League champions Manchester City, whether he is playing in midfield or defence, and is arguably the greatest Brazilian we have seen in the English game. 
Fred has gone from strength to strength this season in the red side of Manchester, following a difficult start to life at Old Trafford, following his big money move, Willian, is a regular fixture in the Brazilian national team and is now in his seventh season with Chelsea, Alex Teixeira, was a transfer target of Jurgen Klopp's at Liverpool, but ended up becoming one of the highest earners in the world game in the move to China, and Douglas Costa is among the most dangerous wide men in the Italian game when he's firing on all cylinders. All of those careers are owed in no small part to the big ideas of Michele Lecceschi, facilitated by Frank Anuda, which transformed Shakhtar into the best team in Ukraine, even after they'd been kicked out of their hometown. Thank you all for tuning into this video, I hope you enjoyed it, hit the like button if so, it's much appreciated, and make sure you are subscribed and have notifications turned on if you'd ever like to see more videos from me in the future.